Hello and welcome to the channel. I'm Chris and today's video is going to be the first in a new series that I've been thinking about for a while called my top fives. As you can see in the title below, today is going to be my top five tips on going vegan. Or if you just went vegan and you're looking, you're struggling and you're looking for help, this video may be for you. Now I've been vegan for the majority of my life. I went vegan at a, at a young age and um, I've been vegan now for going on 29 years. So I feel like my life experience uh, kind of speaks for itself and I feel like I have some information to give to you guys and uh, I've seen it go from what it was back in the 90s to what it is today. So um, in no particular order, number five for me would be get into familiarize yourself with ingredients, knowing what's vegan and what's not vegan, and always reading the labels on the foods that you buy if you don't already. Uh, when I first went vegan, it was a whole new world for me. It was a new challenge and, and I looked at it in a positive light. I thought it was like a fun new challenge. So I had to learn what ingredients I could eat and what ingredients weren't vegan. And sometimes it's pretty obvious, but sometimes it's not so clear what ingredients are and aren't vegan. For instance, you might be looking at something that otherwise looks vegan, but maybe it has something like L-cysteine or gelatin or mono and diglycerides or carmine or red four. So some of those ingredients are definitely not vegan. Other ones are kind of in the gray area. You're not really sure. You got to do a little bit more research. You might have to contact the company for certain things like mono and diglycerides or lactose. Some of those things aren't vegan, but sometimes they are vegan. So it's kind of confusing. Some of the other ingredients that I was talking about, like carmine, uh, red four and uh, L-cysteine, they're not, they're not vegan. They're not even vegetarian. You could throw gelatin in there too. Gelatin, not vegan. They definitely have vegan gummies but you always got to look for things like gummies and stuff that have gelatin in them. And then there's some certain foods that you wouldn't think would have anything in them that would not be vegan, such as there are certain planters peanuts that have gelatin in them. So they're not even vegetarian. They coat them in a, in a gelatin, which is a uh, ground up hooves and bones and skin and connective tissues of different animals. It's in a lot of uh, foods, a lot of, uh, candies and gummies, but yeah, it's also in uh, some planters peanuts. So look out for that. But on top of that, when I say always read the ingredients, because sometimes companies change their ingredients. So you might have a product that was vegan. And then all of a sudden they say something on the package where same great taste, new ingredients. That might be a, a red flag to go ahead and read the ingredients. But I always like to, if, if it's a product that isn't from a vegan company and it's a product that doesn't say vegan on the package, I like to continue to read the ingredients every time I buy it. It's rare that this happens, but sometimes in all my years of being a vegan, I found several products that have been vegan that they secretively or without telling anyone change to not being vegan. So you always got to be on the lookout for that. Number four. So sometimes when people go vegan, they realize that they don't know anyone else who's vegan and then they feel alone, which frustrates them. And then they kind of fall out of it. So my piece of advice to this did not exist when I went vegan, but now we have the internet. And it's a very powerful thing if you choose to use it right. So what I would say, my piece of advice is that there are many support groups, many vegan pages, and there's a lot of uh, local support groups. For instance, I live in upstate New York, so I'm in Syracuse Vegans. I'm in Central New York Vegans. I'm in Rochester Vegans, and I'm in Western New York Vegans. I'm in all of these uh, groups with like-minded people. Now, when you join these groups, you see what you would pretty much expect. You'd see other people posting food, where they found it. Um, if somebody finds like something new and vegan at um, a local grocery store, they'll tell you where they found it. And now you can see what different kind of vegan foods exist out there. On top of that, they might have support groups where, you know, you, you meet up with a, uh, a potluck so you can meet other like-minded people, which I've done several times. I've met a lot of people that way. 
And it's just a great way to connect with other people. Now, if for some reason you're in the middle of nowhere and there's not a vegan page where you live, here's what I always say. If there's not one, then make one yourself and see if other people join you there. But if for some reason you're in the middle of nowhere, nobody's there, you can always come to places such as my page. I do a live stream every single week where people, like-minded people come to my chat and we usually talk about food. Um, we talk about other things too, but we ask questions. People feel like they get their questions answered. They get to talk to other like-minded people. And there's literally thousands of other channels like mine that do the same thing. So you're not alone there. If you have the internet, if you have access to the internet, which most people do these days, then you can find support so you don't feel quite alone. Even if in your, your real life you don't know anybody else, this is a way for you to meet other people, at least remotely, so you can talk to them and get some of your questions answered. Number three. Now this works for me and I always like to tell other people, you gotta get into the right mindset. And once you do that, it just seems so much easier. Now I never looked at going vegan as, as something that was difficult. I knew it was a challenge, but for me, I made it a positive thing. Like I said, I made it a, a positive, fun, new challenge. It was, a, it was a new beginning of my life. I did it at such a young age that it opened up so many different foods in my life because before that, before I was a vegetarian, before I was a vegan, it was pretty much the same standard American foods that my mom would make and, you know, go into fast food joints and stuff like that. And then when I opened up my world to going vegan, I knew that I had to start finding other things that I could eat because, you know, you, you start looking for new foods. And when you do that, you find new foods and it's pretty much opened up my world to so many different things that I had never knew existed before I was a vegan. So when I say mindset, I understand that people still eat animal products, but to me, in my mind, I've kind of twisted that around to say, I don't consider animal products to be food. And when I say that, I take that quite literally. Now, I know people eat it, but my analogy is, uh, I often tell people, this is my, this is my smartphone and I, I can't eat it, it's not edible. Well, that's the same way that I perceive animal products, that they're not edible. So what does that leave me? It leaves me with all of the other foods. We got plants, we got grains, seeds, nuts, mushrooms, we have all these other foods that are available to combine in literally an infinite amount of combinations to make different meals. Now it's just up to me to figure out which ones I wanna eat, which ones, what combinations I wanna to use to make what meals, how I wanna cook. And, and I'm a person that like, I like to have something that tastes good. I don't wanna sacrifice the taste of my food. So I still wanna eat something that tastes delicious. And I do, and I have, and it's possible. It's actually quite easy once you get you know, out of, out of your other mindset and you get into this new set. So that would be my number three is change your mindset. All right, we're at number two and this one is documentaries. Now I often suggest people watch certain documentaries. There's several out there that pertain to veganism and how we eat. And I think that these are very eye-opening and educational and can reinforce why you choose to go vegan. So some of the ones that I recommend are uh, Forks Over Knives, What the Health, Cowspiracy, Game Changers, uh, Fat Sick Nearly Dead. And um, this here is not quite a documentary, but it's something that I always suggest people watch, whether they're a longtime vegan like myself or they're just going vegan. And it's a speech that I filmed many years ago in New York City of Gary Yurofsky, who is an activist that has an amazing speech called the best speech you've ever heard and um, I, I will link it below I actually filmed it on my other channel but I'll go ahead and I'll link it below so you guys can check it out and sometimes I'll go back and watch it all the information is it's kind of timeless and ageless and um, I think it still pertains today even though uh, it was several years ago that uh, that he made this speech but I still think it's a wonderful speech and everybody should listen to it and we're down to our number one, and this is something that I always recommend to people when they go vegan. This is something that we all have to do, and it's we all have to eat food. So if we all have to eat food, I wanna make it so people have no reason to complain about the delicious foods that they're eating. 
So a lot of people, when they go vegan, they don't know the first thing to do. So this is what I say, grab a notebook or a notepad and a pen, or use your notepad on your smartphone or tablet and start making a list of the foods that you already eat. Some of your favorite meals that you eat on a daily, weekly, monthly basis. And write all of those down, make a list, and then go over to Google and start Googling your meal that you listed and say vegan version of this, vegan version of ravioli, vegan version of spaghetti, vegan version of mac and cheese, vegan pizza, vegan Reuben sandwich, whatever you're going to make, you can find a vegan version of it. And when you go and you Google a vegan version of it, you're literally gonna come back with thousands of recipes. And I always say, you're gonna find something from a very, very healthy recipe to a junk food comfort recipe. Find something in between there that looks good to you and make it, try it out. If you don't end up liking it, don't worry. Just go back through, pick another recipe until you find one that you actually like, and then go through and repeat that with all of your other foods until you have a whole vegan list of all your favorite foods that you normally eat. Furthermore, I would say when you go shopping at the store, unless you're a whole food vegan, then that's you know pretty self-explanatory. You're just buying veggies and fruits. But if you are going to make meals and, um, and you want imitation versions, which I get, um, they're not the healthiest things, but they're better than eating the counterpart and they're quick and they're easy. So what I would say is if you're going to buy vegan cheese, which by the way, when I went vegan, there wasn't very many versions of vegan cheese and it literally tasted like cardboard. It wasn't good, but we've evolved and we've come to where we are today, where we have delicious versions of so many different things. So if you find uh, a product such as vegan cheese that you don't like, don't just immediately say, I can't do this, it's gross try a different brand, try a, a different kind. Um, there's vegan cheeses I don't care for. There's vegan milks I don't care for. But guess what? There's so many different ones that there's versions that I do love. And once you find certain things that you really like, then you can use those as like a staple. You know what you like. And that's basically what I do. When I find something I like, I buy that and I know that I can rely on that. And then when a new product comes out, I'll say, you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to try that out to see if I like it or not. And if I, if I do, then, you know, I'll buy it again. If I don't, I'll let people know that I didn't really care for it, but we're all different. So something that I might like, you might not like, and vice versa. Some of the vegan cheeses that I think are, are really good are uh, Miyoko's uh, mozzarella. We have Vile Life slices, Follow Your Heart, Chow, Good Planet Foods. These are all really delicious products that I think, uh, you know, depending on what you're gonna make, if you're gonna make a sandwich with a sliced cheese, or you're gonna grate some up and put it onto a pizza, or you're gonna make mac and cheese with some shreds. You know, they have different cheeses for different uses and uh, they taste good. So you just gotta kind of find what works for you, what you like, and then go from there. Once you have a base, then you're pretty much set and um, it gets easier. So, you know, don't get frustrated. There's a lot of support out there. There's a lot of videos out there. And, um, you know, it's basically veganism is, is something that I've seen grow over time and, and, and I can say that the future is vegan. And when I say that, I don't think everybody's going to go vegan, but I think it's going in that direction. From when I went vegan to right now, it's only getting bigger and bigger and bigger and it's gonna keep doing that. And it's because it's not a diet, it's not a fad, it's a lifestyle and it's, and it's the right thing to do. Um, I often say that um, there's so many reasons to go vegan and, and I haven't found any reasons not to go vegan other than you just simply don't want to go vegan. So uh, I guess that's it for this video. I hope you guys liked it. Let me know in the comments below if you want to see more of these top fives and uh, subscribe to the channel. Uh, watch out for zombies and I'll see you guys next time. Oh, and by the way, I got these brand new shirts and hoodies that I'm wearing right now, along with other designs there. You can pick one up on, in the link below. Uh, it supports the channel and you get an awesome t-shirt. Come on, guys, look at that. Done by a local artist. So, we'll see you later.